Welcome to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis B. Wolf and Sandy Runner. I am Alexis B. Wolf with the Fiery Sword Global Ministries, and you can reach me at www.thefiersword.com. And I'm Sandy Renner, and you can reach my webpage at sandyrenner.net. Yes, I can, and we, and we are, are better, better together. together. <laughs> and the body of Christ is so much better, better together. together. And so Sandy and I purpose to bring the living words into everyday life, practical application, and just learn how to take this unadulterated, untainted, just this beautiful word of God, and say, how God, how do I take this and put it into my, how do I pour this in to life? And we've had to figure that out. We're still figuring it out. <laughs> We're still figuring out. Because you know what? Life keeps happening. Life keeps happening. We get interruptions of our life all the time. Yes. And we're no different. Mm -hmm. And so I think because we have had to experience that mm -hmm. and figure it out, we have a passion to mentor others to be able yes. to, how to figure it out, come out victoriously, mm -hmm. at least most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. that's correct. And when we don't come out victoriously, we still get up, we dust ourselves off, and we begin again. So it's, it's, it's all good. It it's all good. All right, so we have been speaking loosely from my book, Thy Kingdom Come, Kingdom Versus, versus Religion. It is available on Amazon.com. So we've been doing this since the first of 2022, and we've really just begun. Just Because begun. the kingdom of God is boundless. It is timeless. It is. It is immeasurable and so we could do this we could just do this on point because she, jesus himself preached the kingdom and the kingdom is eternal it is so eternal. there is no end there is there no is end. no yeah. end mm -hmm. so we're going to be in chapter five today chapter five is called forsaking fear now we spoke about this a few weeks ago then we kind of deviated from that for the last two weeks uh, but we're going to take a little bit different slant we're going to talk about the rest of god now that that does not mean in addition to god the rest, the peace that passes all understanding. And we've talked about it before, but we cannot talk about it enough, Sandy, mm -hmm. because there are so many people not functioning in rest. And I didn't for many years. Me either. So I, I, in this book, in Chapter 5, I quote Graham Cook, and it's his last name is C-O-O-K-E. If you have mm -hmm. never heard of Graham Cook, he is he's European. Right. I think he's, you said British? British. I think he's British or Australian. He's from London. London, he's definitely British. <laughs> yes, that's as British as you um, get. Yeah, and so he said, the kingdom of heaven is not a problem-solving universe because there are no problems. The kingdom of God has no problems. It is perfect that's in so every way. Exciting. So then he says, in the kingdom, everything is only a possibility. And I love that so much, Sandy. And one of my life's lessons that I learned way back in the, in the 90s, somebody, some older man said it to me. He's probably my age now. He was an old dude. Um, but I, I don't know. I was kind of caring out about something. And he said, you know, Alexis, um, there are only opportunities. I wanted to punch him in the face, yeah, right? Because exactly. it's like, what do you mean? I have a problem. I just told you this what it is. This is a real problem. <laughs> and you're talking possibility. Right. But it stuck with me. Yeah. I didn't get it right away. I didn't right. go, wow, I just had this epiphany about there are no problems. But years later, I mean, like, I could can't think of his name, but I can remember the man's face and when he told me what was going on in my life. And and that is my, one of my life's, I don't want to say quotes, not just a quote, but I live by that. It's like right. I approach every issue of life, every problem, the way we would see it from an earthly perspective, as an opportunity for Christ to shine, to deliver, Absolutely. to show himself God. And so one of the biggest issues I think, Sandy, and, and I think you will concur, within the body of Christ is we say a sinner's prayer, we accept Christ as our Savior, and I'm not saying that's in genuine, I'm talking about the people who really have said, okay, I accept Christ, I want Him to be Lord of my life, but they have no concept of what it is to think with a heavenly perspective. Right. And this is why we talk about the kingdom, because as we get into these chapters in the coming weeks and months, we're going to really talk about who are we in Christ Jesus positionally. Yes. Um, and so when we understand who we are, then we understand, okay, I can't keep looking at everything from the earth. Right. I have to begin to see things from heaven. In other words, we have to raise our minds up. We can't keep functioning the way we've always functioned in the flesh and the earth, just kind of the way everyone else handles problems or issues of life, circumstances. Um, but, and I, I, I teeter on this, I don't want to, because I'm sure there are exceptions, but many pastors 
don't teach that. How to get your mind on things above as opposed to things below. Sure. And so we, we are hitting spiritual issues from the flesh. Yes. And so our minds are not enveloped in the kingdom. Even though we have the kingdom, we're still ensconced in this earthly flesh. And so we're still thinking earthly. Like, like, and so every oper every problem is really an opportunity. Listen, I still have a hole in my ceiling. It is now, what, it's been mid, there a mid while. 2022. Yeah. And we were waiting, waiting for it to air drive and the guy couldn't come. And then he had to up his price. And that's fine. I understand all of that. And We've had issues this year, which I've already talked about on Better Together, and just financial issues, and my kid, just, you know what, it's not even worth talking it's about. It's life. It's happening. life. Over and over. So I still have a hole in my ceiling, and I see that as an opportunity of when it's fixed, what a testimony that will be. I don't know how. I don't, I don't know how that's going to transpire. Um, but there are things, and 2022 has been incredibly difficult for my family. Yes, it has been. It's it has. I could cry right now thinking about some of the things. And, um, it has been a really difficult Opportunity. Opportunity. <laughs> we laugh through the tears because we I, have to. I know my God. Yes. I know his kingdom. I don't know everything. You know his character. But I too. know God's character. And every season passes. Good seasons pass. Bad seasons pass. But God is still God. He is the sustainer of my life. Yes. And when we begin to look at all these things, and I could give you a list, but I will not. Um, because you have your own list. But I have a, a list of things that have happened this year that it has been bam, 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 bam. But intertwined with all that has been such good stuff. Yeah. My daughter, who has been chronically ill for 14 years, we thought we had a resolution about three years ago, and uh, 20 and a half, three years ago, I don't even know what year it is, about three years ago, and um, that was part of the problem, but they didn't catch the bigger issues. And um, so now she is required to have surgery, to have a gallbladder removed, and there is an issue with her... Um, it's a congenital issue that they, they've missed all these years that she can't process any kind of sugar, but that means like potatoes and corn, I mean healthy, right. you know, good food, not just don't eat sugar. Junk food. Um, so there's that, and so enveloped, I keep saying enveloped, but enveloped inside what looks like a bunch of problems are bountiful blessings because that's who God is, and yes, that is. is his character, and that is his nature. And so I can only see it that way because I see God for who he is and how he is. And like you said, his character and the kingdom of God, everything is an opportunity. And I keep telling my daughter, Sophia, that as she's been sick all these years, I have said it from day one. I say it now. But there have been moments just like, God, I don't feel it. I don't feel what I'm saying. But I still know that what I'm saying is true. That eventually God will take that darkest time of her life and turn that for an incredible opportunity to minister yes. to other people who are dealing with things like that that or like that um, I mean I can look at my life you can look at your life we've talked about it many times this yes. is why we wrote our autobiographies to say in our darkest hour when it seemed like there was no hope and no way out no door no window no crack no no light no nothing I mean I can feel them as I'm saying them but yeah. I know you can yes. too we that we moments. know these opportunities that felt like this is it. I may as well just lay Throw down the and die. Towel. And God would open a door, a window, a crack, and a glimmer of light would come in. And then that glimmer of light became a bursting ray of sun. The sun comes in. And so when I can hang on to the kingdom of God, who I am in it, who God is through it, then I can say, this is not really a problem. Right. As Graham Cook says, in, in the kingdom of God, there are no problems. So God doesn't need to solve his problems in the kingdom. So when we raise our thinking up to a kingdom mindset, we will yes. see things. The, the, the issues, the problems, the circumstances don't change. How we see them changes everything. That's exactly correct. Why don't you jump in? Okay. The funny thing is, in the kingdom of God and in the, in the scope of all of our issues of life and our problems and the things that causes us to suck in our breath and, and, and some people are much larger than the ones I've experienced and some of mine's larger than... Maybe what some others have. But the, scale. but the truth is, we are always going. But God, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And what's the answer? And I, I need an answer. And I need to fix this. And I need to solve this. And the truth is, there's really only one answer. Correct. And and so this is going to be just a quick little funny story. I volunteer to do children's church once a month at our church. My husband and I. And, 
I'm really not called children's ministry, but I suck it up and just do it that one time. So this past Sunday, uh, it was uh, Mother's Day, and we were going to, and I made up a little story and put a lot of blanks in it for the kids. They were about seven to nine years old for them to fill in the blanks, and it was supposed to be a funny story for Mama's Day. It's about Mama. And so I made a list of words that they had to stick to. And so they all attempted to divvy out the words and make it really funny. Then this other kid, he's a little, little, uh, a little more matured for for some of them and so he did his correctly and then he came back and said can I read another version of my story and I said yes and he filled in every blank it was about six blanks he filled in every blank with the same word and I'm going okay you took up my time and sitting here at this table God took me back to that moment mm -hmm. and said, you just thought he was aggravating you, but I'm trying to make a point. There is only one real answer. And God used that silly little thing mm -hmm. right now to speak to me. There is only one answer. I don't care if your troubles are, are relation troubles with other people, uh, money problems, health issues. All of those things are, can be very serious things. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's your problem. But there's only one answer. And that is the principles of the kingdom of God in operation. The trouble is in most of us, most of our spiritual journeys, we've learned a lot of religious rules. And not real kingdom dynamics. That's correct. And that's what we're going to try to endeavor to teach you how to walk in that, how to find that one answer. You know, I talk a lot about the, the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And I read this, and and I haven't fully developed the, or where they was going with this, but I just want to share it with you. Adam and Eve was in a perfect garden. Mm -hmm. Not so God could seclude them and make them puppets, it's just that they had no lack there. Everything was provided for because God wanted Adam to be able to kingdomize, if you will, the out, outward parts of the garden. He was to abide in the garden. He was to have everything provided at his fingertips. And now he had responsibilities and he had boundaries he couldn't cross, obviously. But God's real agenda was not for him just to stay in the garden and just enjoy the, the abundance. At some point, God's agenda was for him to go out and kingdomize the rest of the world. Of course, what happened? He fell. He got put out of the garden. And so now he's got to try to figure out how to do kingdom stuff with a with the earthly mindset mm -hmm. and that's where we are that's been our struggle since that's then. our struggle mm -hmm. is trying to figure out the, the the mandates of god the will of god the 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 provisions of god in an earthly mindset mm -hmm. and we just got to renew our thinking but it's all got to be kingdom focused correct correct let me read a scripture um that i love it's in hebrews 4 uh it's 1 through 11. I, don't, I didn't write the whole thing, but anyway, it's in Hebrews 4, starting with the first one. It says, For we who have believed do enter that rest, which is interesting because in Hebrews 4, the chapter 4, he, he talks about those who will not enter his rest. That's right. Okay. So we're in Hebrews 4. So, uh, For we who have believed do enter that rest, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. Mm -hmm. There remains a Sabbath day rest. I love that. Mm -hmm. For the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works. And God did from his, as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Now, what disobedience? Now, we could name a thousand things that were disobedient. In Hebrews chapter, chapter uh, Hebrews chapter three, verses eleven through thirteen, and I think it's eighteen through nineteen. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brethren, that there not be any one of you an evil, 
unbelieving heart mm. that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that so that none of you will be hardened by their deceitful. I'm sorry, hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Uh -oh. So when we go from chapter 3 to chapter 4, we are seeing that those who cannot enter are from unbelief, and those who do enter are from belief. So believe what? Believe what? Right, and so this is what we have to get into his word and say, okay, I'm, I'm not just saved from hell. We can believe, it's in the stranger, we can believe an invisible God enough to not die and go to hell, but we can't believe him for these little <laughs> mediocre things. I know. That, that, that he could literally day life. exchange his life for hours, this this awesome process, mm -hmm. but we can't believe him to pay the light for that. It is, or, or to make provision for that. It's, it's really a crazy thing. And so... When we look at that in everyday life, Father, I thank you that that hole, you can't see it, but Father, I thank you that that hole in my ceiling is sealed and well done the moment it needs to be sealed and well done. Father, I thank you that this has nothing to do with everyday life. I thank you, Almighty God, that it has nothing to do with my spiritual walk. I thank you that it is truly irrelevant. It really is. It, it doesn't really cause a health problem. Irrelevant. It doesn't cause, well, it is going to cause some financial things, but God will provide for that in mm -hmm. His timing. We can learn from every single instance. Yes. She has learned that that ceiling does not identify her. Correct. It does not define her in all of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. It's just a hole in the ceiling. Yeah, and so years ago, 22, I don't know, whatever years ago, I started looking at God's promises. And there are plenty of books written about the promises of God. But I wanted to find them for myself because that's yes. just kind of the kind of person I am. But I did list um, 10 of them. Uh, I think it's on page 48. Uh, so so when we are kingdom-minded, what do we do? We pull from the Word. That's we say, it. okay, if I'm going to think about things like the kingdom, okay, there's a hole in my ceiling, and my kid is looking at surgery, and my other kid is looking at she needs more college funds, and this and that, the other, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And believe me, this is the answer. This is the, the answer. answer. So I have listed one. One of God's promises is, I will turn for good that which Satan means against you for evil. Okay. Now, we, we can hear that, that verse quoted and quoted oh, yeah. and quoted and quoted. But what does that mean? That means that is my rest. It is. That is my peace. Okay, Father, so here's my list. These are the things that are potential problems, but you said they're not problems. You said they're opportunities. So, Father, I thank you as I wait in peace and patience and rest that you will take what Satan means against me and you can list your whatever. And Father, I thank you that this was an opportunity for you to show yourself, God. Yeah. For me to be a witness to the lost, uh, whatever the, the things that we can't even think or imagine. That's but right. Father, I thank you, whatever that looks like to you, you will take this mess and turn it into a blessing Absolutely. somehow, some way. So Father, in advance, I thank you, even before it is resolved, where I can see it. Absolutely. So that's number one. Um, that's Romans um, 828, also Genesis 5020. Which goes back to Joseph, which, just go back and read it, it's so good. Number two, I have listed. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things will be added unto you. That is in Matthew 6, 33. So, okay, I can, I can go to God and say, okay, God, here's my list. These are the things that are happening that are quite unpleasant, that I don't like, and I would prefer it to be not happening. But Father, I thank you that as I live in accordance to your will. Now, this is crucial. And we've talked about this in weeks and months and years past, Sandy, that re obedience to our God is required of us. Yes. We cannot expect blessings from a God when we are not bothering to bless him. That's right. Now, I'm sorry, but that is a cold stone or stone cold fact. It just is. The word is filled with that. Uh, but obedience is really not hard when we recognize it. That's right. Obedience becomes a pleasure. So I can look at God and say, okay, here's my list. Father, I, I worship you. I honor you. I, I, though I falter, we all falter, but my, my goal in life is to honor you, for me to manifest the kingdom of God in this earth. So because of that, because I know who I am and I, I know that I am purposing to follow God's mandate, then I can count on God coming through for me. Yes. I can count on that as a promise, so therefore I don't have to sit around and fret and stress and toil and worry. It's good. All right? 
Number three, for the obedient, you will be blessed coming and going, Deuteronomy 28, 6. Mm -hmm. That's just a staple promise that I learned a long, long time ago, yes. and I love that. In Deuteronomy 28, it's full of blessings for the obedient. Yes. All right, so, and we could spend a lot of time on these. We're not going to. So, uh, number four, for those who are obedient, you will be blessed coming in, and or, I'm sorry, blessed in the country and blessed in the city. That's also Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. Um for those who are obedient, the Lord shall cause your enemy. I love this. The Lord shall cause your enemies to who rise up against you to be defeated before you. Mm -hmm. They will come out against you in one way and will <laughs> flee before you seven ways. So again, that's in Deuteronomy 28. But I love that one in particular. Yes. That I do not have to fight and stress and toil against my enemy. I can sit back and you talk about this really well. I'm not give you deviate unless you talk about that. But the way we war, you know, we, we war and we know we're calling on Jesus' name. Right? We gotta do that. But rest is truly I can sit it's back the greatest warfare. It is. So I can sit back and I, I like a friend of mine said years ago, just duck. I don't have to punch and punch and punch and fight and cuss and fuss and carry on and in the name of Jesus. Now no, we're all about the name of Jesus. Well we are. But when I can just sit back and go but God appropriately. I am your obedient servant. This is my life dedicated to you. I belong to you, so this is your battle. That's right. And that is truly the rest of Christ. Do you want to you add anything? Or go well, he anything? said the battle is his. He, did. he said the battle is his. So why do we continually want to fight? Well, you know, all of that warfare stuff in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you, you understand the background of Ephesians 6, where Paul, the apostle Paul who wrote it, he was in a Roman prison. Mm -hmm. And he started looking at those Roman guards and he saw the armor of God, so to speak, in the natural. He saw it in the spirit. And so it says, uh, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, uh, but against these dark powers. Mm -hmm. If you look at that word wrestle, it means to sway. Meaning, duck. I don't have to fight. I just learn how to sway. Bob and weave, baby. As the Spirit <laughs> leads me. I love that. I love it. Well, we want to fight. Yeah, and that's not that's not our fault. We wear ourselves yes, out. We I've been in many circles, and so have you, where they want to shove the devil and scream at the devil and bring the devil down and pull the devil up and mm -hmm. beat the devil up. And we're not called to do any of those things. I'm sorry if I'm busting your warfare bubble. Let me tell you something I learned the hard way. You win or lose your battle at your point of response. Well, the doctor says, I have cancer. But the Lord says, well, uh, her hole in the ceiling is going to cost $1,000. Maybe. We'll see about that. You win or lose your battle at the way you respond to the problem. And when you respond to the problem as if it's not a problem, but an opportunity, mm -hmm. this is what rest actually means. Say hello to the kitty. Come on, Charlie. Keep Charlie. talking. Keep talking. Okay. This is what rest looks like in the middle of your trouble. And you can't see me fully, but I'm just laid back. The <clears> battle <throat> is raging. We're not in denial. Thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. that you said the battle is the Lord's. So you got this one, God, because I can't do a thing about it. When we rest in his promises, uh, she's listed these promises, and they're awesome promises, and they are, we can lay claim to those, but you can't run around, I claim this promise, I claim yeah, this nice. problem. No, you walk <clears throat> in the obedience, and the problems, and the problems just come under submission to right, the they blessings. Right, to diminish, yes, or work themselves out. Absolutely, because you choose, and it is choice, I'm going to choose to believe God over my circumstances. Correct. And it goes back to what we said in Hebrews, for the believing. For the believing. Because what does it say? We, we said, we um, quoted this one a couple weeks ago. Um, Revelation 21, 8 says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns the fire and brimstone. 
So <clears throat> we address the unbelieving. So it goes back to what do we believe? Yes. If I believe, and therefore, if I believe that God's promises are true, and there are scads of promises, then this is just ten. Um, if we truly believe the promises, then our belief is what ushers the rest so that I can be at peace. Even if I'm crying, absolutely. Even if I don't like how something feels, or <clears throat> something somebody dies, or somebody's sick, right. or somebody loses their job, you know, whatever the case may be, I may not like it in the flesh, and so I, I weep, and that's okay because God sees your tears. Yes. But I'm still at peace, knowing that God has looked at this as an opportunity for Him to shine His absolutely. light, for Him to manifest Himself in the situation, and so my rest is completely wrapped around what I believe. Yes. And what do we really believe? Okay, you believe that you're not going to go to hell? Great. You know, I think anybody could probably just do that because it feels imaginary. Yes. But to really believe and understanding, Father, your will be done. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. Your will be done. Absolutely. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. When we really get a hold of that, when we let that get a hold of us, and we are looking only to the king of the kingdom, I believe you, God. I thank you that you are in love with me. Number seven here, wait a minute, is it number seven? Number seven is his promises. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. Do oh my you gosh. believe that? Do you Do believe, you believe that? that the Lord, and we are out of time. We are out of time. I uh, long to be gracious for you. And that's in Isaiah 30, 18. Yes. We're going to, we're going to. We'll pick this up next week. Because that one is a... Yes, and that's... God. That's a great one. So, all right, we're going to leave you hanging, but I hope you guys will come back next week. If you have just tuned in, you are listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis V. Wolf. That is me, Sandy Renner. That is her. We are both ministers. We are authors. We, we just... We are here to serve God's people. Absolutely. We are here to serve and help people understand how to take this word and apply it to everyday life. Um, Sandy has her book, her, her autobiography, Stories, A Woman's Journey of Becoming Imperfectly Perfect. Came out about, I don't know, what, a year ago, year, yeah, two years ago, uh, whenever it was. Anyway, it's so, so good. It is a nice sized book. It's 110 stories of her life's journey, her walk with her family, her walk with her God, her walk with her uh, enemies and friends and ministry and partners. And stumbling around. Yeah, her, her, her God took her out of the country for the first time at the age of 60. And what that looked like, possibilities. possibilities. It looks like possibilities, this whole book. Because uh, I always say it, it will grow you in your faith. So I want to say it will grow you in your ability to see things as possibilities. Absolutely. Because that's what it is all about. That God can take the dirtiest, filthiest rags and turn them into a prince, yes. a, a king, a queen, you know, whatever the case would be. Royalty. To turn you into royalty. And that is what he's done. Yes. You know, we are of the royal priesthood. And so, which is why we teach the kingdom. To, so we can understand who we are. So we can stop seeing everything as a problem. Yes. Because stop it. And speaking of dirty rags, you know, the Bible says our righteousness before God is as filthy rags. Here's <coughs> you a story about it. Gaucho's God and Great Expectations is Alexis's um, autobiography. And from birth to now. And I'm telling you, it is a true rags to riches story. It's possibility. Not, it's, honey, possibilities <laughs> don't even touch this book. Um, we talk about rags to riches and we think about finances, but in, in godly character, in her times of great distress, failures, I can't even begin to tell you the mess up this girl talks about. If it could be done wrong, she did it wrong, and she did wrong with excellence. She perfected Gosh, the thanks. word wrong. She really did. But to watch how God took all of those mm. possibilities, those areas of possibilities in her life, and begin to groom her into the woman of God you see today. You want to know how that happens? Day by day, falling down, getting up, and saying, but God. Mm. But God, this is a, a word, but God, you do great to read it and let it help you walk through the problems of your life. All right, well, we are out of time. Again, we have a brand new episode every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on YouTube. We also post it on Facebook. But you can go to YouTube, just type in Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible, and all our previous, what, two years? Yes. Or will come... Oh, 
Two years in June. Yeah, That's crazy. Two years, uh, two years worth of uh, broadcast will be on there. So uh, please share, like, comment. Please hit the subscribe button so that you can be attuned of what's going on. You can share it with other people. Because, again, we just want to work together in the body of Christ. Or not even work. We just want to flow together in the body yes. of Christ to help us all begin to apply the living word to everyday life. Mm -hmm. You guys be blessed. Shalom.